Good Monday, makers, and welcome back to another episode of Maker Pipe Monday. This is our weekly build showcase series where we round up projects from the community and showcase the creative ways you guys use conduit and other materials. We've got some great ones today with all kinds of hacks and cool things. Let's jump into it. First up is a throwback to last year. It's, it's Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to all you makers out there. But we've got a great project shared by Seattle design nerds last year on Valentine's Day, and it was the Hidden Heart Project. They, put, they made this and built it outside in Seattle. And as you can see, they built this framework using conduit. I think it's shrink-wrapped conduit. Then they used some red and pink and white pool noodles, which are a great material to use for all kinds of things, whether it's protection or fun stuff like this. And they made the hidden heart. So you can see if you stand right in the perfect area, you can see the hidden heart in the project. So that's really cool and a great Valentine's Day project. Thanks so much, Seattle Design Nerds, for posting that. Definitely check out their Instagram for all kinds of cool projects like this. Next up is a cool project from Dan, and this is a, a boom arm kind of desk extension for a mic and using three quarter inch conduit and T connectors. So as you can see, he found that road threaded mic mounts would fit inside of a T connector. He said he shimmed it just a little bit, but it was a nice tight fit after he did that and it allowed him to extend and have the swivel mount for his boom arm, which is really cool and a really cool hack that he found out. He said he used some self-tapping screws to secure the T-connectors. It's always good to have that extra strength, especially when you're dealing with expensive audio equipment. A really simple project and a great way to make an extension arm for a mic. So thanks so much, Dan, for sharing that. We love seeing it. Next up is a project from Axel, and he needed a backdrop for his YouTube channel, Axe Maniac. We talk about him a lot. He posts a lot of great projects. He used MakerPipe and just kayak content in general. So definitely check out his YouTube. But he made this backdrop for his videos using a conduit and maker pipe frame. So he's got some empty conduit going up and he's using T connectors all the way around. I think it's a total of six T connectors, really simple frame. And then he used a tarp that's attached to the framework and he used some zip ties, good old zip ties. You can't really beat them when it comes to a cheap and simple solution. And he attached those to blocks of wood with a, a DIY flange. So this is just an off the shelf flange. And he threaded this three quarter inch adapter into it that has has kind of a rib joint on there and I would imagine you just hammer conduit onto that or hammer it onto inside of conduit attach that to the base we also have flange solutions we just released uh, after he built this and posted this but we've got some flanges that we just added and we've actually actually got questions people asked about the new flanges which is cool we're going to go over those questions at the end so stick around for that this is a great project from axel and he shared some details on how he made it and some different things so definitely check that out looks awesome thanks so much axel for, sh for sharing that next up is a project from patrick and this is a adaptive snow sled or kind of a sled upgrade so they said they have a disabled child and they wanted to add some more support and have a, a adaptive equipment so their child could go out and play and have fun in the snow. And we love stories like this because they were able to save some money in the process. So usually if you wanted to buy an off the shelf solution for something like this, they said it was a few hundred dollars and kind of expensive. And so they found this snowmobile sled on Amazon. It's called the Fast Track looks like Fast Track SR2 on Amazon. It was kind of a inexpensive solution, I think about $100 for a sled, which is a really sweet sled for $100. You can see it's got a mechanism to steer it got some sleds on there so that's really cool and what they did is built off of it with maker pipe and conduit so they use some three quarter inch pecs we have some shims on the site that are basically just pecs and you can use those they work great you can also get some off the shelf and make your own and they use those shims to take t-connectors off of the framework and add some railing around the back so it's just got three pipes that go up from the frame that hold this 90 degree bent piece of conduit it looks really cool and it looks like a nice upgrade it's awesome to be able to take your child out and play in the snow. Thanks so much, Patrick, for sharing that. We love seeing it and hearing that kind of a story. Next up is from Bill, and he's got a new truck with a flatbed that holds a lot of weight. So he wanted to add some storage to the back for his cleaning business, a pressure washing business. And he did that with Maker Pipe. And he did a great write-up and blog and a video on it. So definitely check those out. But he built this rack system to hold some cleaning supplies and just some other things on the back of his truck. You can see here he's got some Maker Pipe framework on the left side, and he's got some big... Uh, I think, let me see what he said, some large, I'm not sure exactly how big, but some really large tanks for the water that he needs for pressure washing. There's the frame, as you can see on this left side, that holds some smaller pieces of equipment, and he attached those to the frame or to the bed using some DIY flange methods, which is really cool to see. Uh, you can kind of see here, I believe. Yeah, there you go. Off the shelf, plumbing flange threaded in there, and he used some of the threaded pipe insert. He referenced our video that we did on reinforcing. So that was really cool and looks really great. And he attached that to the bed of the truck with that. So he said it's strong and he trusts it, which is great. Uh, we love seeing it. it, looks like a great project. Definitely check out his blog and video on it if you're interested in learning more and doing something similar. 
Thanks so much, Bill, for posting that. Next up is a project from John. Oops, I actually just gave you a sneak peek of the finished build, but this is the before photo. He said this is the corner that they were kind of making over, and they want to turn it into a prep station. So you can see they've got this fridge there, a lot of stuff stacked up on there, but they turned it into a prep station, and they did that in a really slick way. So they built this frame. The mini fridge goes here, and they use 90-degree connectors to make a rectangle shape on the top and then a square down here. Then they just use T-connectors, add shelving and bracing where needed. The whole thing sits on casters so they can move it around. And once they had that, they can roll that over top of the fridge, and then they have this nice-looking butcher block on top of the frame. And what a transformation. It's an extreme makeover, I'll call it, of this of this corner. Because you can see there's the before, and then here is the after. Beautiful prep station area. Looks really great. Thanks so much, John, for sharing that. We love seeing it. Next up is a couple questions on the new flanges. We just released over the weekend some two new flanges, the adjustable angle flange and the rigid flange. And there's some hidden features in there and people were asking questions about the hidden features and where they could get the, the parts. So Casey posted this photo of a trellis design they're working on and they wanted to use the rigid flange with the two adjustable pieces of conduit on the outside kind of go up and brace the trellis. It looks like a great project and I can see how that flange would be useful for this. And they were talking about the end clamps on where you could get them. So we used to have them on the product page uh, as an option, but we, we redesigned the product pages a couple weeks ago and left those off whenever we did that. But now it makes sense to add them back for this kind of a solution if you wanted to, you know, add it to the flange. Makes total sense. So we'll definitely be doing that. Be on the lookout for that. We appreciate the questions and it looks like people are loving the new parts and that's really awesome. We're glad to see people finding them useful and already getting ideas. It's really awesome to see. And on that note, Axel asked if we could post the dimensions and the whole patterns of the new flanges for help with designing as well. Definitely. That's something that we'll have. I'll update that on the product page and I'll put it in the community. I'll respond here. I might just make a whole nother post just so anybody else come into the community to look for it. So by the time this video is posted, those will be on there. So definitely check those out if you're interested in designing some projects. But thanks so much for the questions on the flanges. It's cool to see that you guys are liking it, getting some ideas for builds. We love seeing it. Thanks everybody for watching. It's another great week of builds. Keep on posting them. We love seeing the, way, the creative ways you all use conduit, maker pipe, and other things. Happy Valentine's Day, and we'll see you in the next one.